In this video, I will try and provide you with a method you can use to calculate the amount of decking boards you might need. And I don't have a specific math formula you can use for this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to point out is that if you are going to build a deck that is going to be 12 feet and you have 12 feet decking material, then make sure that you make the deck shorter than the decking material if you don't want to have any breaks in the materials. And you can see that right here where we have a 12 foot board lined up with this side of the deck. And if we go to the other side, you can see where it's a little smaller. So that's the first thing I want to point out. Next thing I want to point out will be that you might not be able to get lumber in two foot increments. So for example, if you're using an engineered product, then you might be dealing with eight foot, 12 foot or 16 foot lengths, suggesting that we're not going to be able to find a 14 foot length. But that's what I'm going to be working with in this example. So it's not like we're going to lay out our decking materials like this. We're basically going to line them up with the edge and move them over to reduce the amount of waste. So we're just simply going to move our boards over a little bit and then attach them to the joist so that we can draw a line above. Remember, we're looking at the bottom of the decking here. And this video is not going to provide you with any instructions at all on how to cut this circular shape. If you need information about that, let us know in the comment area. So you can see where we have lined everything up and moved the boards over. We've got a long board here. And some of these boards here will work over here. So for example, this board here looks like it might work here or even here. And this board here, of course, might work here or here. This one here might work here or here. And this one here might work here or here. So we've got a lot of waste here. And I'm not about to suggest this is going to be your best option either. But you might be forced to deal with this, depending upon the lumber sizes available for the decking material. So next up, let's go ahead and reduce the size of some of these boards. So here we have 14 footers. I changed the colors every time they step down two feet. So here we have 12 footers, 10 footers, eight footers, and then a six footer. And you're gonna be able to get the six footer by cutting a 12 footer in half. And you might be able to use the same method if 16 footers are available and you need eight footers. Or 20 footers are available and you need 10 footers. You just cut them in half. And you don't need to just cut it in half. And if I have 12 footers to where I need an eight footer and a four footer, or a nine footer and a three footer, or a seven footer and a five footer, that might work also. And if you don't want to have any breaks in the decking at all, then all you would need to do would be to use 12 foot boards here for these next two boards, and then a 10 footer for this board here. And of course, that's all gonna depend upon whether or not you can get those lumber lengths. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this area for those of you who don't know exactly what a break in the decking is. And that's where we cut the decking board a little shorter so that the center of the break will be located on the center of the decking joist. And then we just simply add one of our scrap boards that we might have to fill in the area here. And then that's going to provide us with a break in the decking. Now, if you don't mind having breaks in the decking, then you can probably do this with eight foot materials. And that might look something like this, where I take an eight footer and I start it at the break that is going to produce the least amount of waste and then simply add another eight foot board here. And then I will cut this board off here and then use it to start my next row. But I'm going to have to figure out where it's going to produce the least amount of waste again. So over here or over here. Or I can set the board aside and use it somewhere else and then start with another eight foot board. Or I can move the eight foot board over and then use two smaller pieces on both ends. And then I can start repeating the process. So here we're going to use an eight foot board here, break it on this joist, same as we did here. And then I don't need to have a single break. I can always have a double break like we have here. However, I don't suggest using more than two boards per break. You're going to need to move the break over. And most of the time it's going to need to move over four foot. But you would need to check with your local building department to verify that information. And you don't need to start in the center like I did. You can always start at the edge. 
or measure from here over to where you would have a break in the decking and then start there with a line that would be perpendicular to the joist. And obviously, since you're building a round deck, this won't need to be perfect. You could always be off at an angle just a little bit, as long as it doesn't need to line up with another section of the decking. For example, if I had a rounded section here and a square section here, then I would make my starting joist parallel to this edge over here. And hopefully that makes sense. Next up, I'm going to provide you with a video that might be helpful for anyone who's going to be building a deck with stairs that will be going off of the deck in two directions. In this video, I will provide you with another project that you might be able to build without a lot of complicated math or calculations. And we're simply going to have a deck with three steps. And the beauty of this is that you're going to be able to use 2x6 or 2x8. However, with this design, we might have a problem with the building code that requires a 4-inch sphere or a round ball to not be allowed to travel through any part of the stairway. And we're going to be at four inches here. If I have a two by six and then I put an inch and a half thick decking board on top of that, I'm going to be right at four inches. And if I use two by eight for something like this, I'm going to be over four inches. And I'm also creating this design here to sit on top of soil. And I'm not about to suggest that these bottom boards won't rot. And I will leave it up to you if you need to make further modifications to this to meet local building codes or work in your area. Another good thing about this design is that we are not going to have any mitered corners. Everything is going to be a 90 degree angle. And that's going to make this project a lot easier to build also. And to calculate the lengths of the boards we're going to use for the smaller stringers, all we need to do is draw a straight line down here and then measure each one of the boards from that straight line. And that's going to give us the length of each board for these smaller stringers. So in other words, this board right here will be the same length as this board. This board here going back to the line will be the same as this one here. And I know that might seem confusing, but let's go ahead and motor on and continue with our tour here. Don't forget you can stop the video at any time. And of course, watch the video again if you miss something or if something isn't quite making sense. And don't forget that you can modify this design, like I mentioned earlier, by installing additional bracing, blocking, and structural supports. And you can connect each one of the 2x6s together with building hardware like straps or flat framing anchors, even blocks. Just make sure that you install some of these framing anchors on each side. If I was just going to install all of these framing anchors on this side, along with the straps, then it might allow the 2x6s to fold over at the brakes or where the 2x6s are going to be connecting to the other 2x6s. So we're going to need to install some type of support bracing on both sides. And another idea might be to use a block and if you put the block in between two boards here and then attach it with screws or nails, something like this here on both sides, then you might be able to use that instead of something like this. And you might even be able to use dowels to fasten these together. And don't forget to check out other types of framing hardware that you can use to create stronger stair stringers. And to figure out this length here, we're simply going to lay out some of our decking boards until we get the desired width that we want. If you want to cut one of these in half or cut it down to create a specific shape, then go ahead and do that. I'm not doing that. This deck, to meet most building codes, needs to be 36 inches long or 36 inches wide here. And to get that, I think 36 inches is right about here. I made it a little bit longer. You can't make it shorter, but you can make it longer. And if we use this method here, we're going to be able to create a deck that doesn't have shorter boards in it. Our deck's going to look nicer, at least in my opinion. And we're going to do the same thing with our stair steps. Two steps with a 2x6 is going to give us about an 11 inch wide step. And it's going to be important to keep all of our stair steps the same width or depth going in both directions. 
So if you can see here, we're just simply raising this step up here. And I'm going to do the same thing with this step here. And finally, with our last step here. If you notice, I've created a flat section here. And we're going to use each section here to calculate the lengths of our decking and stringer boards. And this is the beauty of this right here. This really makes your job easy. And make sure that you figure out the width and the depth of the deck before you get started. So in other words, you might not need to cut any of these boards. For example, if I had 10 foot 2 by 6, I could lay the 10 foot 2 by 6 next to each other, put the desired gap in between each board if I'm going to have a gap in between each board, and then grab my measuring tape and measure the distance. And if I want to make this distance here the same as this distance here, so that both the width and the length or the depth of the deck will be the same size, then I can do that. And it wouldn't be that difficult to lay out your boards in this direction here with the desired gaps if you're going to have them and have them run full length to get these measurements here. So the measurement for this board right here is going to be the measurement from right here to right here. The measurement for this board right here, this step, this 2 by 6 the second one down, is going to be measured from right here to right here. And this board here is going to be the measurement from the front of this right here all the way to the back. And you guessed it, this measurement here all the way from this point to this point is going to be the measurement of our bottom board. And now would be a good time to point out that the bottom board will need to be ripped down and made a little bit shorter. What you're going to do is take the height of the decking. 2 by 6, we're going to have an inch and a half thick 2 by 6. We're going to subtract an inch and a half off of the bottom board. So if we have a 5 and a half inch wide 2 by 6, we're going to rip that down to where it's 4 inches wide. And that's going to allow you to make each riser height the same size. So again, these lower boards, all of them, are going to be an inch and a half shorter if we're using inch and a half decking. If I'm using two inch thick decking, then I'm going to subtract two inches off of my two by six. And I won't be going into a lot of detail about that in this video. However, I do have plenty of other videos at our website. Make sure you check them out if that doesn't make sense. And in our design here, these are not going to be the same size because the width of this is shorter than the length. And you can see it right here. If I wanted to make this length here the same as this length here, then I would need to cut these boards a little shorter. For example, if I have three foot three and a quarter inches as a measurement from here to here, I figured out how many decking boards I'm going to need according to my local building coat. Got to be bigger than three foot. Then the same is going to hold true for the width. I could simply cut these boards here three foot three and a quarter inches to create a square landing or a landing with the same measurement for the width as it would be for the depth. And that's going to change the measurement of some of our boards. And I could always make this four foot wide and this four foot long also if it's going to work with our decking. And hopefully that makes sense. However, if it does not make sense, then feel free to let us know in the video comment area any questions you have about this. Or if there was something I didn't mention. Or if you have a better way, then feel free to share that with us in the video comment area.